So I'll talk a little bit about uh, more clinical findings that uh, we have based on the phase 2.1 data. So Griffin described that the phase 2.1 data uh, have patient level data, but they're stored locally. We do a federated learning. And we are particularly focusing on the uh, basically temporal change. Uh, Jeff's last slide is a perfect segue. So you, if you remember the shape of the slide, it seems that there's a, an obvious two waves that uh, we saw and uh, we have access to data from multiple sites and also multiple countries. So we are also interested in understanding what are the similarities and also differences. So um, here, the one particular, so sorry, just quickly uh, mention that we actually have data. We looked only at data between uh, March 1st, uh, 2020 till the end of January. And even so, we see an obvious trend after uh, early fall or late fall, depending on the site. But we chopped uh, the data, when I described the data in early wave versus a late wave or first second, we chopped in August because most of sites have very little um, infection or hospitalization during the summer months. And we also looked at between August to, to January, that's when we start to see gradually um, an increase in hospitalization. But one interesting finding we probably all have seen in the literature and also even from news articles is that the mortality rate among those who were hospitalized actually went down. And we wanted to understand what are the potential drivers that actually contribute to the changes. And also, do we see any between country variation? Um, so to answer this question, we looked at the 2.1 patient level data from 16 healthcare centers, 13 of them aren't in the US, they include some are from the VA system, we have three international um, sites from uh, France and uh, Italy, but for a lot of the analysis that I will show later, I might I will actually only focus on the US and France because only the two French sites had a lot of patient level data and also longitudinal um, trajectory as the labs. We have about a total of 70,000 70, patients. And uh, here is just a rough summary of the demo demographic shift over time. So here I'm actually looking at every two months from March, April, May, June, et cetera, till September, November. And you see, you will see in other results as well. And similarly in the previous slide for the mortality, you see a slight U shape. Basically in early pandemic, everything was pr pretty bad and many patients with a lot of comorbidity tend to die. And you also see that we also have more patients with a higher comorbidity score in early pandemic. In the summer, we were doing pretty well, but starting September, it started to go back up. But if you look at the age distribution over time, uh, we actually, this is actually slightly different from what we, initially anticipated, but we checked all our data, checked across site, we did see that uh, there is a slight, uh, basically a decrease of the older population from the very beginning of the pandemic, but after the summer months, actually the percent among those hospitalized, the percentage of older patients actually went back up. Um, and the male, female on average also, that at the very beginning, we see a lot of male patients, but over the course of pandemic, they became pretty even. So we looked at, at admission, what is a clinical presentation? So we did notice a patient was slightly less sick. We picked these three as representative because it's basically very important to measure about the information, blood clotting of the D-dimer, uh, the CRP, and also the creatinine. So you can see if you compare, the first is the orange, the blue is the second wave. And you can see that the second, the distribution of the second wave is always fatter in the lower end. That means that the distribution of these measurements went downward. 
So they, we tend to have slightly less, basically lower CRP, uh, slightly uh, lower creatinine, and also you don't see, for example, the D-dimer in the early pandemic, you can actually see patients with very high D-dimer, uh, some patients, but generally speaking, they went down. We also looked at what happened to them during hospitalization. So this is actually a summary of the lab trajectory over time. The, the top panel shows on average over all patients, and then we further stratify them according to the, the uh, weeks of hospitalization. So among those who only stay in the hospital for one week, two weeks, and three weeks, because that represents how quickly they can recover. So you can see an interesting trend. Again, the orange is the first way the blue is the second. So people started slightly less sick. So the, but the more interesting pattern is after they get admitted, you actually see a much faster recovery during the second phase. So the blue one go down much more quickly and it's per consistent. So ac across the board in the, you know, the, those who left the hospital quickly in two weeks and three weeks. We also see that more patient left the hospital more quickly. So you have higher patients that only stay in the hospital for, for one week, for example, and you'll have fewer for three weeks. We further looked at mortality risk. We looked at the baseline characteristics, including the lab measurement, uh, comorbidity score, and the demographic information to build a mortality risk prediction model. And then based on the mortality risk, we assign them to three risk categories, the low risk category, high ri um, moderate, and high risk. And then we looked at their actual probability of dying within these risk category and look at over time. So that allows us to say, if we account for the phase of patient presentation at admission. So basically, if you look at early pandemic versus late pandemic, if the patient look more or less similar, like how likely they're gonna recover, how likely they're gonna leave the hospital alive. So you can see that the mortality risk at the very beginning for the high risk is 40%. It did go down to third, less than 30% during the, la the second phase when we see the, you know, the second wave. And similarly, you do see among the moderate, you went down from 20% uh, to like 14%. Even the low risk, the low risk of patient basically in the beginning, you there's still more than 5% chance of dying, but you will decrease a little bit. So that is sort of explaining that after we adjust for patient presentation, we do see a decreased risk. So this is actually similar to what, consistent with the story that we saw in the previous slide about the lab recovery. Basically patients tend to get better more quickly and more likely to survive. But if you look at the patient risk profile, basically what's a fraction of patient that arrived as very sick versus as less sick, you actually still see a U shape. Essentially there are more more patient with high risk at the beginning of the pandemic, that percentage went down a little bit during the summer months, but it actually went back up around the, the November, basically after November when the second wave came. So in other words, we act from the very beginning of the pandemic to this, the peak of the second pandemic, we actually don't see that much of a difference in, in terms of patient presentation when they uh, arrive but we do see that their mortality, even among the high risk, did go down. So I will also go over uh, quickly, what is the, do we see any variation across countries? So I just want to mention, again, we only looked at the US and France where we have a lot of patients in both, both hospital, I mean, sorry, both countries. So in terms of the number of patient arrival, they actually are really different. We had a lot, we had a huge increase in the in the November wave, but in the French side, we see uh, not, not as big of a um, number of patients. But if you look at the mortality risk, they have a somewhat similar shape. They went down and then we went back up a little bit. But if you also look at the Chelsea comorbidity score, it's sort of reflecting a slight difference in how, um, patient present, uh, basically the patient cohort across countries. 
And in terms of their baseline characteristic, they are actually fairly consistent. So they have a similar shape that going um, basically um, slightly less sick in the second cohort, but the distribution are reasonably similar. Although in the French side, we saw a higher percentage of patients with a huge high uh, D-dimer at arrival in the early pandemic, they have less. So US is, has slightly less fraction of those patients. And in terms of the trajectory, they are largely consistent in terms of the shape, but you can, the US actually has a lot more patient total sample size. So you have, uh, you have uh, more obvious uh, patterns and less variation in terms of the, the the confidence bars as these vertical bars, but the general pattern is pretty consistent for the two, uh, two countries. And in terms of the mortality risk, again, the general patterns are actually fairly, uh, uh, very much shared. We see uh, basically a decrease over time, especially from the early pandemic to the summer months. But in the US, we seem to see a reasonably consistent um, lower risk even in the November, but in France, you actually see a higher uh, percentage. But in terms of the percentage of patients that are higher risk, et cetera, you actually see a fairly consistent across the two countries. So in other words, we do see a reasonably consistent pattern across the two countries, although we do not, uh, in terms of their presentation at baseline, there is a little bit more variation across countries. Um, I think that's all. Thank you.